Well, good morning. Welcome to another grey winter day here in Cambridge. Now this morning, I'm gonna do something that I do every single year. I'm gonna take a look at my tariff. I'm gonna compare it to all of the other tariffs that are available. And we're gonna make a decision whether we stay on the current tariff or we move to a different one. Now, as part of this process, we'll be looking at all of the Octopus Smart Tariffs, the Fixed Tariff, and we'll also be looking at Next Drive from Eon, and also to the newcomer, Tomato Energy, and see how they all compare. Now, we're gonna use my real-world data, so we're gonna take all of the data from last month in 30-minute increments for the entire month, and we're gonna come up with as an accurate as possible prediction of what it would have cost for each of those tariffs. Now, I'm sure some of you are gonna be shouting at me and saying, you didn't consider this tariff, this is really great. There are reasons why, and I'll explain more when we head back into the office and take a look at the numbers. So let's start by talking about why we included certain tariffs and not others. So the way I approached this is I went to each energy company's website and I agreed to put in the minimum of information to be able to get a quote. Now, some websites, um, Octopus as an example, uh, Eon, all they require is a postcode. That'll give you the general area. Occasionally they might ask you to select your individual house and that's just so they can tell if you have a smart meter or not. But others, specifically EDF um, and a few others, uh, Ovo was another example. They wanted a whole load of personal information before they'd even give me a quote. And actually some of them, even wanted me to start the transition from my current energy provider to them before they'd actually show me how much I was gonna pay, which I thought was just unacceptable. These, this unnecessary data gathering to be able to personalize your price, not acceptable. So if you have a product, put the price of it on your website, let me make a decision whether I want to continue to, to engage with you, or I can look at that number and just say, no, I'm good. So they're not included. The only companies that are included here are companies that were open and honest about their pricing, who put it on the website with the minimal of data gathering to uh, be able to provide me a price. Now, obviously, because of the way energy is priced in the UK, you may get slightly different rates in your region to what I get in mine. You might get better, you might get worse. And I haven't included standing charges here because that's a whole different argument all on its own. Standing charges are, again, are regionalized and they vary wildly across the country. So this is just the price per kilowatt based on the east of England uh, pricing for each of these vendors. Okay, so who are we including and which tariffs are we looking at? So we're gonna look at uh, the Octopus Smart tariffs to start with. So we're gonna look at Cozy. We're gonna look at Go, Intelligent Go. We're gonna look at Flux. Then we're also gonna look at Octopus's fixed 14 month tariff. This is their tariff, if you don't have a smart meter, this is the tariff that you will get. We'll look at Eon Next Drive, which is the one that everybody in the comments has been telling me I should look at. And we'll finally, we'll look at Tomato Lifestyle, which is their new smart tariff um, from a relatively new entrant to the market. So the way this is gonna work is I downloaded all of my smart meter data from the 1st of December to the 31st of December. And I've downloaded it in 30 minute increments, which is what the smart meter gives you. We will take that data and we will apply it to each of these smart tariffs. Now there's something to bear in mind. My data will obviously be very different from your data. Um, I'll pop a graph up on the screen right now that shows how I purchase my energy. So you'll see during the night, we import a whole load of energy, we store it in our batteries and we use it during the day. But ultimately, we certainly in the winter, we exhaust those batteries by the end of the day. So we use all that energy up, but the pricing will still be the same. Where necessary, I will move the time slots around. So for instance, on Octopus Cozy, there are three time slots where you would get low price energy. They don't tie up with the time slots that I actually used in December. So all I've done is I've moved the time slots down. So if, there, if there's a time slot at between two and four in the afternoon, is I've moved the stuff that I would do in the early morning into that time slot and replaced it with the data from there. So 
all of these tariffs are completely fair. They're all based on exactly the same number of kilowatt hours and where applicable, I've moved the heavy usage from a cheap time slot on one into a cheap time slot on the other. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop up on the screen my bill for December. Uh, I'm gonna show you the number of kilowatt hours that we use across the whole month and how much I paid for it. And then we're gonna go through each of the tariffs We'll see what it would have cost to be on that tariff for exactly the same amount of kilowatt hours, but obviously adjusted for the cheap time slots, as I mentioned a moment ago. And then at the end, we'll put them all on the screen, we'll put them side by side, and we'll make a decision as to which is the cheapest. So let's start with Octopus Cozy, or Cozy Octopus as they like to call it. Cozy Octopus is a heat pump only tariff, so you have to have a heat pump to be able to get cozy, and it has three cheap slots during the day. So you have a couple of three hour periods and a two hour period. And the idea behind this is if you want to do boost heating, you can heat your house up, then let it cool off. It also has a premium price point in the afternoon. So when electricity is at its most expensive, obviously incenting you not to use electricity during that period. So for Octopus Cozy, obviously we had to rework the data so that it fits in with the correct time slots, but that means we would have had a bill at the end of the month of £312.53. So that's our first data point. That's Octopus Cozy, or Cozy Octopus. Next, let's look at Octopus Go. Octopus Go is a smart tariff for EV owners, and it's one of the two most popular tariffs on Octopus and you'll see why in a moment. So Octopus Go gives you five hours of low cost energy between half past midnight and half past five in the morning. So actually this was the tariff that I was on throughout December. So with Octopus Go, the price would have been 160 pounds and 50 pence for that same amount of power. Then we come to the most popular tariff on Octopus, that is Intelligent Octopus Go. Now, Intelligent Octopus Go is very similar to Go. You actually get one extra hour. It starts at 11.30 at night to 5.30 in the morning is your, your fixed cheap rate period. But you may also get other periods during the day. When you plug your electric car in, Octopus may deem that it's cheaper for them to charge it now than wait till the early hours of the morning. So you can't plan on these. When you plug your car in, you get told if it's gonna charge at a different time, but they're not part of the standard planning. So it's, it's impossible to model is what I'm trying to say here. So we've modeled it on just the six fixed hours that you get from uh, Intelligent Octopus Go. Now I should say, this tariff does require you to have either a compatible car that Octopus can talk directly to, to tell it to start charging or not, or a charger that they can do the same. They can turn it on and off remotely. But with Intelligent Octopus Go, we would have had a price of 140 pounds and 47 pence. Okay, let's jump to another tariff now. This is a tariff called Flux. Flux is a tariff that's specifically aimed at users with solar power and batteries, and the ability for you to be able to store power and release it back to the grid when it's optimum for you. Now with Flux, you get a different export rate to the one that most of us are on, which is a fixed export rate. The export rate changes at different times of the day. So you can import power when it's cheaper and you can sell it back to the grid when the price is more expensive. But with Flux, I would have paid 310 pounds and 59 pence. So quite an expensive tariff from my point of view. So what if you don't have solar and batteries, you don't have an EV, you don't have a smart meter, you're just on a fixed tariff? Well, Octopus have what's called the fixed 14 month tariff. Now this is quite expensive because it is the same price throughout the day. And if like me, you import large amounts of power during the night, there is no benefit to you for doing that. So this would have cost me 366 pounds and 61 pence. Quite an expensive tariff to be on. Now, obviously, if you're not an EV owner, you don't have batteries, you're probably not importing uh, uh, or bringing it as anywhere near as much power as we do. Um, certainly when you couple a, a, an EV with a heat pump and battery storage, um, you will generally bring in large amounts of power in one go and then eke it out during the day from the batteries. Okay, so those are the Octopus tariffs that we're gonna look at today. Now let's take a look at Eon's next drive. Now, Eon's next drive um, has been touted as one of the lowest cost tariffs for EV owners in the country. And 
again, you get a fixed number of hours um, during the night to charge your car. And Eon Next Drive would have come in at £124.08, which is very reasonable when you consider the amount of power that I imported that month. Okay, let's have a look at uh, the new entrant to the market, that's Tomato Lifestyle. Now, I had never heard of this company. They seem to come out of nowhere. And I'm always a little worried with new entrants to the energy market because of the troubles we had a couple of years ago with lots of companies jumping in when it was deregulated and the vast majority of them just going bankrupt. What tended to happen when these companies folded was your account was handed to another provider and that provider then put you on a fixed tariff until the time the whole thing had been worked out. Now, for me, that would be incredibly expensive. If I'd moved to Tomato and they fail and we get handed over to another company and it could be a year before we can change tariffs or move to another provider, that would be a very expensive proposition. So I'm always a little worried with new entrants to the market, but those that are on Tomato say it's a really great tariff, they're a really great company to deal with, so let's give them the benefit of the doubt and let's apply the same uh, data to the Tomato Lifestyle Tariff. Now again, Tomato Lifestyle has three individual prices. Um, it is a little more confusing because there's kind of a cheap, not so cheap and an expensive part of the day, uh, but you get three, um, three separate prices throughout the 24 hour period, but it would have come in at 145 pounds and five pence. So again, very low cost tariff. If you're an EV owner or a heat pump user, it's something you may want to consider. Now, I do want to add one more um, Octopus tariff to this mix, and that's Octopus Agile. Now, Agile is definitely not a tariff for the faint of heart, especially if you've been on it through November and December of 2024. The way Agile works is for every half hour slot during the day, you get a different price and it's based on the market uh, cost of that electricity. Now, that means it can spike up to a maximum of one pound per kilowatt. That would be bankruptcy for that if I was paying that kind of money permanently. Um, but when you average it out across, the, uh, across a whole month, in the month of December, Agile averaged out at a price of 20.03 pence per kilowatt hour. So if we'd been on Agile across the whole month, yes, there would have been days of pulling what little hair I have left out of my head, but the cost for Agile would have been 192 pounds and 87 pence. So again, not too dissimilar, certainly not as expensive as a tariff like Flux or Cozy, but not quite as good as some of the EV tariffs. So I was on Octopus Go, Octopus Go would have given me a, uh, a bill at £160. If I'd moved to Eon Next Drive or to Tomato Lifestyle, I could probably have reduced that by anywhere up to about £35 to £40. Now, the question you've got to ask yourself is, is that saving going to continue? Is it going to be worthwhile moving to those tariffs? For some, it might, absolutely will be. £30 a, a month, take that across the course of a year, and you're, you're up at sort of £360 of savings across the course of a year, a substantial chunk of money. But I'm probably not going to move. Now, I did actually move tariffs on the 1st of January to Intelligent Octopus Go. Octopus finally came up with a solution for me to be able to enroll multiple um, uh, Zappi chargers into, the, into their network. It's a little bit of a hack. You have to kind of delete one out of your account, pair the other one, and then... I had a bit of trouble re-adding the Zappi back to the account, but it's all sorted now. We're now on Intelligent Go. So we've probably saved ourselves another £20 a month just by going to Intelligent Go. But am I going to change to Eon Next Drive or to Tomato Lifestyle? Probably not. Now, this is just my personal opinion, but I'm a big fan, you can probably tell, of uh, what Greg at Octopus is doing. Um, Octopus being a UK-based energy company, I would much rather that any money that they make from me is used to invest into the UK energy distribution market. Um, Eon um, obviously have shareholders, um, RWE being one of their biggest shareholders, the large German en energy company. 
Um, and so again, some very large, should we call it institutional investors, um, are part of that company. So the profits from that company end up going out to these investors. I would much rather they stay here in the UK and invest in the UK energy market. So that's my personal reasons for staying with Octopus, even though it isn't the cheapest, it is pretty close to being uh, one of the cheapest options available to me. That's it for today's video. I hope you found this useful. If you would like me to take the spreadsheets and the tool that I built to do all of this and make it available, then drop me a note in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see if this is something that you find useful, if you want to do your own comparison across all of these tariffs. Um, it will take a little bit of work to make the spreadsheet into something that is usable by everybody else because I just built it for me, so therefore it's not particularly pretty, but I'm sure I can uh, manipulate it into something that might be useful if others would like to use it. With that, I'm gonna sign off. I hope this has been useful, and if I'm lucky, I'll see you back here real soon for another video. Take care, bye-bye.